8th edition of Exercise Shakti, a biennial Indo-French joint military drill, began on Thursday at Camp Larzac, La Cavalerie, marking a significant step in defense cooperation between the two nations. The exercise focuses on joint operations in subconventional warfare under Chapter 7 of the UN Charter. Both contingents, comprising 90 personnel each, include the Indian Army's Jammu and Kashmir Rifles and France's 13th Foreign Legion Half Brigade. Senior military officials, including Brigadier Viresh Thapur and Colonel Benjamin Brunette, attended the opening ceremony. Addressing the troops, dignitaries emphasized tactical coordination, operational synergy and trust building. Over the course of the exercise, both armies are set to conduct joint drills, share strategic insights, and deepen mutual understanding, reinforcing their commitment to global peace and bilateral defense ties. Wipro Infrastructure Engineering, WIN, announced plans to acquire a majority stake in the French aircraft parts manufacturer, Locke Group. The deal, revealed during the Paris Air Show, marks a strategic move to expand Wipro's global aerospace capabilities. While the stake size and deal value remain undisclosed, necessary regulatory and employee approvals have already been secured, with the transaction expected to close in the coming months. The combined entity will operate as Wipro Lock, overseen by a joint board of directors. Lock's current CEO, Mikhail Cheriton, will retain his position. Wins CEO, Pratik Kumar, highlighted that Locke's aerospace expertise complements Wipro's vision of building a fully integrated, global aerospace solutions platform, enhancing customer value and innovation. In 2024, nearly all nine nuclear-armed states, including India and Pakistan, intensified their nuclear weapons modernization, upgrading existing arsenals and developing advanced delivery systems. India reportedly expanded its nuclear stockpile slightly and worked on canisterized missiles, potentially capable of carrying multiple warheads. Pakistan also advanced its delivery systems and accumulated fissile material, indicating a likely arsenal expansion in the coming decade. Tensions between the two nations escalated into a four-day military confrontation in May 2025, raising fears of nuclear escalation. Experts warned that third-party disinformation and rapid strikes during the conflict nearly triggered a nuclear crisis. Meanwhile, global trends show a reversal of past disarmament gains, with newer warheads being deployed faster than older ones are dismantled, sparking concerns of a renewed nuclear arms race. The Indian Air Force is moving forward with plans, to procure the SPICE 250 Extended Range Precision Guided Bombs to enhance its long-range strike capabilities. Developed by Israel's Rafael, the SPICE 250ER uses a micro-turbojet engine and AI-powered targeting, allowing it to strike targets over 300 kilometers away, with high accuracy. This acquisition is aimed at countering Pakistan's growing air defense, particularly its PL-15E missiles integrated with J-10C and JF-17 fighters. By outranging Pakistan's missile systems, the IF Su-30 MKI and Rafale jets can target strategic enemy assets while remaining safely within Indian airspace. The planned purchase complements India's indigenous efforts like the smart anti-airfield weapon under the Atmanur Bharat initiative, strengthening its overall aerial deterrence and modernization strategy. At the 55th Paris Air Show, Safran Aircraft Engines signed a key agreement with Hindustan Aeronautics Limited, HAL, to industrialize and produce rotating in-canal parts for LEAP engines, supporting India's Make in India initiative. This deal builds on earlier collaborations, including a 2023 MOU and a February 2024 contract for forged parts. Aimed at meeting the rising demand for single-aisle aircraft in India, the partnership expands Safran's production footprint through HAL and additional Indian facilities. Safran, operating five sites across India, will also open a Hyderabad MRO unit by year-end. The agreement strengthens India's aerospace ecosystem, with over 370 LEAP engines already in service, and more than 2,000 on order. Plans also include expanding military cooperation on M88 engines, powering Rafale jets. Former JNK DGP Sheshpal Vaid raised questions over a recent lunch meeting 
between U.S. President Donald Trump and Pakistan's Army Chief, General Asim Munir, suggesting four possible motives. He speculated whether Munir could be preparing for political leadership, hinted at potential business interests involving Trump's son, and considered U.S. strategic aims, such as securing air bases near Iran. He also pointed to concerns over jailed former PM Imran Khan. The meeting reportedly covered the Iran-Israel conflict and regional security. Later, Trump claimed he helped avert a war between India and Pakistan, crediting both Munir and Indian PM Narendra Modi. However, Modi, in a phone call with Trump, asserted that the May 7-10 ceasefire was achieved solely through direct military communication between India and Pakistan. Pakistan's Deputy Prime Minister, Ishak Dar, publicly confirmed that Indian airstrikes during Operation Sindor on May 7, 2025, hit key Pakistani airbases in Rawalpindi and Shirkat. Dar's statement, delivered during a televised interview, marks a departure from Pakistan's earlier denials regarding the extent and impact of the Indian strikes. The Deputy PM's remarks also highlighted the urgency within Islamabad to de escalate the crisis, with Dar admitting, that Saudi Prince Faisal bin Salman contacted him within 45 minutes of the strikes, offering to mediate and convey Pakistan's willingness to halt further escalation to India's external affairs minister S. Jai Shankar. The public acknowledgement by Pakistan's deputy PM and, subsequently, Prime Minister Shabazz Sharif, who also admitted to Indian Brahmo's missile strikes on multiple locations including Rawalpindi Airport, represents a strategic shift in the transparency of Indo-Pakistani military engagements. It also underscores the effectiveness of India's operational planning and execution, as well as the broader regional and international efforts to prevent further escalation. India's DRDO is developing extended-range versions of the Panaka rocket system, Panaka 3 and Panaka 4, with ranges of 120 km and 300 km, to be inducted within three to five years. These upgrades align with India's push for self-reliance in defense under the Atmanirbhar Bharat Initiative. Current variants of Panaka, which evolved since their deployment in the 1999 Kargil War, offer ranges between 40 to 90 km. The upcoming systems aim to replace older platforms like the Russian Grad and Smirch. Panaka 3 is expected to undergo user trials by late 2025, while testing for the 300 km variant is set for October 2025. These systems will include enhanced propulsion, GPS-assisted navigation, and AI-driven targeting. DRDO has also validated guided Panaka versions with under 10-meter accuracy blurring the line between rocket artillery and tactical missiles. India plans to induct 22 Panaka regiments by 2030, up from the current 10. DRDO's collaborations with Tata, LNT, and other private firms support large-scale indigenous production. The Panaka program is also gaining global traction, with Armenia becoming its first export customer. DRDO chairman Dr. Samir V. Comet further revealed parallel efforts on Project Kusha. India's most advanced air defense system, set to begin deployment by 2028. <laughs> India is preparing to approve a Rs 67,000 crore acquisition of 97 Tejas MK-1A fighter jets, with the final nod pending from the Cabinet Committee on Security, CCS. This procurement, expected to begin in financial year 2026-27, builds on the 2021 order of 83 jets, taking the total to 180, and positioning the Tejas MK-1A as the Indian Air Force's core multirole fighter. The move aligns with the Atmanirbhar Bharat initiative and aims to replace aging MiG-21 and Jaguar fleets, developed by the Aeronautical Development Agency and manufactured by Hindustan Aeronautics Limited. How? The Tejas MK-1A features upgrades, like ASA radar, BVR missile capability, and electronic warfare systems, with over 65% indigenous content. While initial deliveries were delayed due to supply chain issues, HAL expects the first unit by mid-2025 from its new Nashik facility, 
which will augment existing Bengaluru production lines to reach 24 jets annually by 2026. The deal is expected to energize India's defense industry, benefiting over 500 domestic firms, including MSMEs. Private players like LNT and VM Technologies are also contributing to manufacturing, making this acquisition a strategic and economic milestone in India's aerospace sector. India's Defence Research and Development Organization, DRDO, has accelerated its efforts in developing hypersonic weapons following the successful deployment of indigenous systems like Brahmos and Akash during Operation Sindor. DRDO Chief Dr. Samir V. Comet confirmed that India's hypersonic glide vehicle, HGV, reportedly named Thvani, has completed its first development trial and is expected to be ready for military induction within two to three years. This progress would place India among the elite group of hypersonic capable nations, including the US, Russia, and China. The Vunny HGV features a wedge shaped, blended wing body design for enhanced speed and maneuverability, and is equipped with ultra high temperature ceramic composites to survive atmospheric re entry. Likely possessing intercontinental range, it is designed to evade missile defenses and deliver both nuclear and conventional payloads at speeds exceeding Mach 5. In parallel, DRDO is also advancing the scramjet-powered extended trajectory, long-duration hypersonic cruise missile, ETLDHCM, under Project Vishnu, expected to reach Mach 8 with a range of 1,500 kilometers. These developments underscore India's strategic intent to bolster deterrence and counter emerging regional threats as hypersonic weapons reshape the future of global warfare and national defense postures. That's all from YKS team for now. Hope you liked today's video. Please subscribe our channel for more such videos. Thanks for watching.